guys and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to have you guys here today. If you are new to my channel, my name is Dr. Daniela Fisher and I am your friendly neighborhood anesthesiologist here to answer some questions that you guys actually asked me on my YouTube channel comments and also I got some DMs on Instagram. My sister asked me some questions and I was really, really excited to make a video answering these questions for you. I actually got so many questions that I think I'm gonna break this up into a couple of different videos. And what we're gonna talk about today is masks. Masks to protect us from COVID. To mask or not to mask. That is what we are gonna discuss today. We're also gonna talk very briefly about the risk of hypoxia and hypercarbia when wearing a mask. But before we get into that, if you are new to this channel and you are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So my mission in today's video is to arm you guys with some good scientific factual information so that when you are looking at Facebook or Instagram and you see something that looks kind of fishy, you can take a closer look and you can know what the facts are because you got them from me. So before we get into the video and we discuss to mask or not to mask, I wanted to answer a quick question regarding something that I saw on Facebook this weekend. A friend of mine posted an article where she said, you should definitely not wear masks because it's gonna give you brain hypoxia and it's gonna give you hypercarbia and that is really bad for you. And you guys, I'm happy to say this information happens to be in my wheelhouse of expertise because I am an anesthesiologist and because I live in masks every day. I wear one of these N95s every single day for like 12 hours. And in fact, not only do I wear this mask, but I wear a mask on top of it that's got an eye shield. So I'm actually wearing two masks. I'll insert a picture here for you. Because anesthesiologists are familiar with hypoxia to the brain and also the whole idea of hypercarbia, which is just high CO2, I wanted to explain to you why it is totally false that masks give you either brain hypoxia or hypercarbia. The simple reason that masks don't give you hypoxia or hypercarbia is because those molecules are so teeny weeny that they go right through masks. I see this demonstrated to me every single day when I'm in the operating room because now at my hospital, as soon as we wake a patient up from general anesthesia, we put a mask like this over their face. But I want them to have oxygen and something that anesthesiologists follow on a regular basis is CO2 levels. And so I also want to follow their CO2 levels. So what I do is I put their mask on and then I put the anesthesia mask on top of it. And not only do I get a reading on what's called a capnogram that shows me that the patient is breathing CO2 out of this mask, but I also have an oxygen monitor telling me that the patient is oxygenating perfectly well. The other thing is people that have high CO2 levels really can't function. They get very tired. They stop making sense. Many times they get sleepy. If it's high enough, they'll even go into a coma. And I wear these masks every single day for 12 hours and I am taking care of other people's lives. If I were getting hypercarbic and experiencing any of those symptoms that I just described, I wouldn't be doing a very good job. So I am here to tell you that you do not get brain hypoxia or hypercarbia from wearing a mask of any kind, not an N95, and certainly not a paper mask like this. There are no studies to support this idea either. There are some studies that indicate if you wear a N95 for a really long time, some people experience headaches but that's not even something I experienced. But as far as data and factual information is concerned, there is no evidence to suggest that masks of any kind cause hypoxia or hypercarbia. So don't let that be a reason why you're not masking. So the question that you guys have been asking is, now that things are opening, do we wear a mask or do we not wear a mask? Well, we know that N95 masks protect us from COVID-19, but they are really, really hard to come by right now. And we also know that surgical masks are wholly inadequate in protecting us from COVID-19. But what about the idea of us wearing masks so that we protect others from the germs that we are carrying? Well, there are no big studies to show that masks decrease the transmission of COVID-19. A study actually did come out just this week from Hong Kong that showed that wearing a mask could decrease the transmission of COVID-19 by up to 
What they did in the study, which I'll link below for you guys in the description box, is they took hamsters and they inoculated them with COVID-19. And then they put them in a cage next to healthy hamsters. And what they found was that the sick hamsters infected the healthy hamsters. Then they took the sick hamsters and they wrapped the cages in a mask-like material and put them next to a new set of healthy hamsters. And they found that there was a decreased transmission rate to the healthy hamsters. So what the study shows is that while it's not 100%, wearing masks does decrease transmission to some extent. Before the pandemic, there was also another small study that was done with non-COVID-19 coronaviruses where they took people that had flu-like symptoms and they studied how much viral load was in their breath when they breathed out. And then they studied how much viral load was in their breath when they breathed out through a mask. And what they found was that the viral load in the air that they breathed out when they were wearing a mask was in fact decreased. So there is some degree of mounting evidence that when we wear a mask, we are decreasing transmission of COVID-19. So to me, it just is common sense and it is logical that there are many ways and many things that we have to do in order to decrease the transmission of this disease in the community. And one of those things is wearing masks. And although it's not 100%, if we wear masks in conjunction with social distancing and testing and tracking contacts and people that have been exposed and isolating those that we know have COVID-19, we can definitely decrease the transmission of this virus in our communities. Hey mom, what you doing? I'm making a YouTube video on masks. What do you know about masks? Well, I know when I wear them, it protects you, and when you wear them, it protects me. You're awesome. <laughs> so my advice to you guys is definitely mask. It is safe. We know from some old studies and some new studies that there is decreased transmission of the virus if we wear them, and it is certainly a low risk low cost initiative to just go ahead and cover up when we're walking outside because we're only decreasing the spread of germs to people around us. So you guys, I hope that you found this interesting or useful. I really, really, really am excited to film some medical related videos for you guys. I have more coming up. I'm gonna answer other questions that you guys have asked, including should we get antibody testing? Why not just get herd immunity? What about kids? How does coronavirus affect kids? So make sure if you are not subscribed to my channel that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Danny Fisher, and I will look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.